and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some additional relational algebra operations uh, called intersection, natural join, left out a join, right out a join, fill out a join, as, as well as uh, assignment operation. So in case you missed the videos on fundamental operations of relational algebra, please go ahead and check the description box for the links for those. So let's start with, first of all, intersection. Now this is an additional operation and if you've watched the previous videos, I've explained fundamental operation. So fundamental operations are operations that are necessary to perform any kind of query in relational algebra, but additional operations are not necessary to perform these queries. They are just there additionally to make your queries look better. So they are not required. So that's why I'm always going to show you the, uh, how to do the same query using the fundamental operations also. Now intersection is a binary operation. It requires two relations to work with and it is used when you want to take intersection between two relations and the tuples are kept if they occur in both the relations. And again, this condition is the condition that is necessary for intersection to be applied and it's the same condition which applies to union and set difference operations also, which were taught as fundamental operations. Now, the condition, I'll, I'd just like to explain it again. It says that if you want to take intersection between two relations, then you require that both the relations should have the same number of columns and those columns should have the same permissible values. So that is what intersection requires. Now, first of all, how intersection looks in mathematics set theory. If you have a set A containing one and two, set B containing two and three, then A intersection B is equal to two. But this can be done using minus also. You just have to perform minus twice. So if you do A minus bracket A minus B, it gives you the same result. A minus B is equal to one and this is set difference which I've explained earlier and if you do a minus bracket a minus b then it's actually one comma two minus one which results in two so this is the same you get the same answer but when you see this is here you are performing only one operation you're writing it in this manner but when you're writing like this it becomes slightly longer that's all and in mathematics, it's okay, but if you're writing a query, a relational algebra query, you know that these things, which are A and B, they are replaced with a whole query, and that query might make it look, you know, bigger. So that's why we are not using uh, minus when we want to perform intersection. So we use intersection. And I'll give you an example of that. So we are going to consider this relation, which is courses relation. Now in this, we want to find out names of courses that are taught in odd 2018 and odd 2019. We want only such courses that were taught in both. And you can see that that is available already from the table, that there is a course DBMS, which was taught in odd 2018 as well as odd 2019. So that is available. And if you want to write it as a query, you would simply write, and again, this should be easy to understand if you have already understood union and set difference. So this is the query. This query would give me courses taught in odd 2018, just the names of those courses. And then I take its intersection for, this is the symbol of intersection. So take the intersection with courses taught in odd 2019 and how that looks is first it brings you courses of odd 2018 which are dbms and ds then you take the intersection and the next thing you want is courses of odd 2019 and it gives you dbms again and of course the result is whatever is common in both so dbms is common and that's the result so this is how intersection works 
and of course there is an equivalent query which looks like this so this is slightly bigger because we do not have intersection so not that intersection is necessary but like i said it shortens the query so without intersection the query would look like this first you would find out courses of or 2019 and courses of or 2018 then you create a subtraction here and then whatever is the result you subtract from courses of or 2018 that's what you would be doing and of course the result would be the same it looks slightly different so first of all this outer query produces courses of or 2018 which are dbms and ds whatever's in the bracket is going to produce this this one produces or 2018 which is same as outer one minus or 2019 course which is only dbms and of course the result of this which is ds the result of whatever is in the bracket is ds and ds is subtracted from outside so what is left is dbms so that is your query equivalent query now let's move to the next additional operation and that is natural join so for natural join again it's a binary operation like all the operations we've seen so far except a few most of them are binary now this eliminates the need to write the sigma condition used in cartesian product so in a minute i'm going to explain how that looks like now this is the sample database we have the instructor relation we have the course relation and we have the teachers relation i have already explained this in my videos on fundamental operations so i'm not going to explain it here again remember that there are three relations instructor course and teachers now we want to find names of instructors and the names of courses taught by those instructors and this query can be easily done by cartesian product which i taught previously uh, so you have instructor cross teachers cross course and then you write down the sigma condition that says that instructor dot i underscore id should be equal to the teachers dot i underscore id use the and operation and say teachers dot c underscore id should be equal to courses dot uh, c underscore id and then from there you need only two columns so we apply pi now that is a query using cartesian product and of course it gives you the result that you want but this query is quite big so using a natural join would produce the same result now you can see that instead of these cross i have these crosses i have uh, changed to this these symbols this is the natural join symbol which looks like a bow tie so this is a natural join symbol and what happens when you put a natural join it understands that instead of cross there is a natural join and this whole condition that we wrote in sigma is replaced by the natural join so when you apply a natural join it is understood that whatever column is common between instructor and teachers is by default compared so instructor has i id and teachers also has i id so these two columns will be compared and whatever is uh, matching will be kept and same thing applies to teachers and course whatever is common between them will be compared and matched and uh, retained so let's see that with an example uh this is the instructor relation and this is the teachers relation now if you were to do instructor cross teachers you would get 12 rows which means each row of instructor is combined with the three rows of uh teachers so that's why there are four rows so you can see row number 1 from instructor is combined with teachers then again second one with teachers third one with teachers first row fourth one with teachers first row this is very easy to understand so cartesian product you can check out uh, if you don't get this now from this when i'm doing instructor natural join teachers then you can see that there are two columns here i underscore id of instructor and i underscore id of teachers so both are compared and whenever they don't match 
then they are removed. So here two is not matching with one, so we have removed it. Then again, four is not matching with one, it is removed. So that way only three, three rows are left. You can see one, two, and three rows remaining because they are matching. So this is what your table looks like now with only those three rows. Now you can see these two columns here. Here also you have one, two, three, four, and uh, sorry, here also you have one, two, four, and here also you have one, two, four. So since the columns are matching, there is no need to uh, keep both the columns. So we will remove one of them and keep only one column. So this is the result of the natural join. This is the same result that you would get if you were to use Cartesian product and Sigma at the same time. But this only makes your query shorter, that's all. That is why it's an additional operation and not a fundamental operation. Now we are going to study uh, outer join. For that, I'd like to explain this example first. So first of all, this is the subject relation. It contains ID of a course, name of a course. I'm changing the database a little bit. Now, I don't want to use the same one because if I use that, I won't be able to explain it properly, uh, explain the outer join properly. So that's why I'm using this new one where I have a course ID, I have some courses and the department. And I have this second one where again, I have a department and I have the head of that department given so this is the relation heads and this is subjects. And of course, if I take a natural join between subjects and heads, then this is what I get. Why? Because there's only one thing matching. You can see CS matches, CS from here matches with CS from here. So that's the only row that matches. And natural join by default is going to match uh, the columns that are similar. So what is similar? You have depth over here and depth over here. That's the only similar thing. So it is matched, but only one thing matches and that's why you get only one row. And that is what this row looks like. Now, we will see left outer join. So what left outer join does is, it is a natural join, but it includes the unmatched tuples of the left side relation and displays them with null values of the right side relation. Let's see that with an example. So same, uh, same two tables we are using. And remember what happened with natural join, there was only one row CS. For left outer join, we use the same symbol as natural join, but we extend these two lines over here. So because it is a left outer join, on the left side, we put these two lines. So it looks like a left outer join. And now this is the result. So you can see what happened is CS was matching. So CS became CS01 database, CS, and then the head Matthew. But ME and EE are not matching. So what happens is we keep those rows as they are, but they do not have a head in this table. So that's why we just put it as null and null twice. This is the result of a left outer join, where the left side values, even if they don't match, are preserved and the null value is attached to those values. Now, similarly, just like you have left outer join, we have right outer join also. This also performs a natural join, but you can guess what will happen. It will preserve the values of the right side relation and display them with the null values of the left side relation. So you can see that again, same two tables are there. And for right outer join, we will put these extensions on the right side. So it points towards heads. So heads, the rows that of heads that do not match here will be preserved and it looks like this. So CS is matching, so it is uh, shown as it is, but PH does not match with anything here, but it will be shown, PH and Thomas, but it does not match here. So the CID and course will remain null. So this is what a right outer join looks like. But you can see that ME and EE are not included because it's not a left outer join, it's a right outer join. So this is a, a right outer join. And now just like you have left and right, you also have full outer join where the values from both the relations are kept and null values are displayed for the opposite ones. 
So this is what it looks like. We take the same two relations and this is the symbol. We put these extensions on both the sides and this is the result. So what is there in the result? If you see, you have, first of all, CS is matching. So we keep that row as it is. ME does not match with anything here. So we keep ME, but we put null for the head. Double E does not match with either of these. So we keep double E, but we put null for the head. Now for uh, the head's side of the relation, CS is matching, but this row is already present. So we are not going to do anything to change that. And PH is not matching. So we are going to use PH and Thomas, but we are going to mark CID and course as null. So this is your resulting relation. And now for the last operation, the assignment operation, it is used to make the relational algebra queries look neater and more readable. So there's, this is its only use. If you don't use an assignment operation, it's all right. It just makes your queries look a little bit better. So I'll give you a small example for that. Suppose this is your query where you want from instructor relation only those rows where the department is IT and the salary is greater than 50,000. And then from those rows, you only want the I underscore name column. So this is the select operation and this is the project operation. Now to write the same query in a different way using assignment operation, we are going to do this. First of all, we take a relation and you can name it anything you want. I have named it A, so let's name it A. Then you put an arrow that points towards A and write your first part of the query with only sigma. So what we have done is whatever is the result of this query uh, will be stored here. It's missing one bracket, but that's all right, okay? So there should be a bracket here. So this is the query and this whole of the query should be stored in A. So A is the result of this query. So now when I want to write down the outer part of the query, I can simply write pi i underscore name of A. So as you can see, it just made my query a little bit readable. It, and it also makes it go stepwise. So you can go one step at a time if you want. So if you feel like you can write your queries in this manner, it's not absolutely necessary. But if you want, you can do it. So, and it, it will help if the queries are really long, but for our smaller queries, this is all right. Uh, writing the query without assignment operation. So that's it for relational algebra. I'm going to put up another video uh, with some examples of relational algebra. If you want to practice examples with questions and answers, then I'm going to do that in an, another video and link it down below so you can watch that. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.